Hello, everyone. I'd like to start off by saying that I'm extremely happy and honored to be here today. This is the first time that I've ever prepared a speech for such a big audience, so bear with me if I get lost. I'm here to talk to you about the women in the economy, their position today, and how if we change it, if we improve it, we can ultimately lead to a better future. I know this sounds like a feminist talk, and in a way it is. I believe I'm a feminist in the way that most educated people are. I mean, I am only one meter 55 high, and I'm, which is five foot one for you Americans, but I truly believe that men and women are both equally capable of innovation, creativity, and intelligence, and that's what we should be rewarded for. We are biologically different. I mean, we have different hormones, we have different physical attributes, we have different strengths, and men can't have babies, well, at least so far. Um, and it's come to my attention that today, the word feminist has very negative and inaccurate connotations. And in my mind, the empowerment of women and the success of women doesn't have to mean the emasculation or the rejection of men. Rest assured, I'm not here to tell you how much I hate men or that I'm going to be burning any bras or anything. Please don't be excluded by the fact that I have women in my title. I'm here to tell you that through economics, how we as a generation can further increase the world's economic growth. First of all, I'm going to be talking about macroeconomics, which refers to the economy on the global scale. The world's population is made up of 49.6% of women. However, only 40.8% of the workforce is made up of women. In no country are women truly working to their full potential as equals to men between men and women. I'm going to be talking about the International Monetary Fund quite a lot, and it's headed by this woman, Christine Lagarde, who is, in a way, my heroine. She is one of the world's leading economists and really knows what she's talking about when it comes to the economy. She's published a very detailed study on women work in the economy, and she also happens to possess this typical Fren French sass, which makes her one of my favorite people of our time. This graph was uh, published by the IMF, and it shows the possible GDP growth we can have. So the green line shows our predicted GDP uh, growth until 2050, and the purple line represents what we could achieve. So as you can see, there's a big difference between what we could achieve and what we're predicted to achieve. We're not being efficient. We're not allocated our resources in the most, in the most efficient way. And I believe that this is because we are underutilizing our most abundant resource, which is women or labor, but women in labor as well. Um, although female representation has always been very present in all economies, um, it's, always, it's been laden with injustice and inequality. As you can see by this graph, in developing regions, there's a much bigger difference between female participation and male participation than in the developed regions. Women produce 50% of the world's food, yet only, are only, prop, only own 1% to 2% of the world's property. Women work 60% of, of the total work hours in the world, however, they only re receive 10% of the income. We're living in a 90 to 10 world. Can you imagine what the fruits of our labor would look like if we were living in a 50-50 world? If female farmers had the same access to resources as men farmers did, what I mean by that is tools, uh, seeds, fertilizers, access to land, we could reduce the world's hunger by 150 million people. That's the same as feeding all of Nigeria or all of Russia. Furthermore, outside of the agricultural sector, in both developed and developing nations, women on average still earn less than 78% of the wages given to men for the exact same work. If this gender gap was closed, a study carried out by Goldman and Sachs predicts that we could boost US GDP by 9%, Japanese GDP by 16%, and the Eurozone's GDP by 9%, and we know they need that boost. Would you overlook such an overwhelming benefit? In microeconomics, in the world of business, women are key to increasing output and profits. McKinsey and Co. Uh, made this study which showed that in companies in which there were balanced executive committees where female and females and males participated equally, those companies had an average profit of 56% higher than the companies which the executives were only men. The Harvard Business Review showed that women with half the money invested are more likely to produce 
up to 20% more revenue for their company. And it's also shown that women entrepreneurs are more likely to introduce innovation, such as new services and products, than their, ma than their male counterparts. Women are good for business, although only 11 out of 500 of the world's most opulent com companies have females as CEOs. That's less than 3%. As the world seeks to grow in a, more, in a way that is environmentally and socially sustainable, the task of figuring out how to unleash the potential of women in the economy becomes all the more pressing. Business is a sector of society today that has the most resources and flexibility to bring around change. Business is how we organize ourselves to solve our needs more efficiently. If we change business, change the how business works, we can change the world. As a society, we need to accelerate our efforts to provide women entrepreneurs with the knowledge, the financial capital, the resources, and the networks they need for them to grow their impact, for them to get out there, for them to show us what they can do, to advertise their products, and to make their impact really felt through our economic growth. Women, in, women aren't simply good for business, they're good for all of us. Bill Gates went to Saudi Arabia recently, and so as you can imagine, most, if we were there right now, all of this would be men, and that tiny percent over there would be women. He gave a talk, and at the end, during the question and answer section, one man stood up and said, when do you think Saudi Arabia will be one of the top 10 nations in terms of technology? And he answered, well, if you're not fully utilizing half of the talent in the country, you're not going to get close to the top 10. The women in the crowd stood up and cheered. I agree with what he's saying. No country can get ahead if it leaves half of its population behind. The McKenzie study showed that in the last 40 years, women in the USA have gone from holding 37% of all jobs to 48%. This increase in female participation in the economy equates with one-fourth of US GDP. That's $3.5 trillion. That's more than Germany's GDP. The Economist showed that in one decade, women participating in the economy in developed countries has brought more to e global economic growth than China has. Now that's really saying something. Oops. I think we'll all agree if I say women like spending money. This isn't sexist, it's true, I know. When women spend money, however, when women spend money, the money that they earn, they tend to spend it more on education, on healthcare, on children, on food, the occasional Prada bag and the big box of chocolates. But what this means is this has a multiplier effect in the sense that they aren't simply investing in the future, even though diamonds are forever. They're stirring the economy in the long run. They're, by consuming education and healthcare, they're injecting money into the system, they're stimulating job growth and diversifying local economies, as well as producing healthier, more educated citizens for the future. Of course, men also invest in a similar way. However, with women earning their own wages, this will increase household income, which means that aggregate demand for these services will increase as well. Evidence from countries as, of a range such as Brazil, India, China, South Africa, the UK, show that when women control additional household income, children benefit as a result of more spending on food and education. And we all know that women are genetically programmed to a certain extent. We, we have this sensitivity and connection to children which men can't really relate to. Well, I don't know, but... <laughs> I think it would be foolish to deny women the opportunity to fully contribute to the long-term economic growth of both their children and their nation. We're still in the beginning of the 21st century, and soon it's going to be our turn to make an impact. And I think that gen greater gender equality can and will enhance global economic output to match the growing population. Ultimately, it will improve development outcomes for the next generations. It's really our turn to take what we know, take what the facts that I've just given you, and make it so that in our future, women and men can work equally, side by side, so that we can reach our full economic output. I think we need to change the way we think to truly allocate resources efficiently and equally in order to liberate the economic potential of women. And ultimately, through collaboration between men and women, we can elevate the economic performances of our communities, of our nations, and ultimately of our world. Thank you.